Hello, Warwick Saints. It's good to be with you again this week. Um, well, this morning we are going to finish up this study on the book of Jeremiah. Uh, I hope that Jeremiah has um, opened up your eyes and has uh, made you see God in a better light of how good he is. Um, in the midst of chaos and everything. So we're going to finish that study up today. Um, and after we finish the message, um, we're going to talk about something to do with the service. Um, nothing bad. Uh, I just want to discuss something with you Um so anyway, this is what we're going to do. So uh, let's start um, with just a short word of prayer, and then we're going to begin to look at the end of the story of Jeremiah. Father God, I thank you, Jesus, for your goodness right now, Lord. I thank you for your goodness, that you are faithful and you are good and you are sovereign, and you are holy, and you are righteous in all your ways, Jesus. And Lord, I pray, God, that you would take this word and that you would just let it blossom in someone's heart today, Jesus. We thank you and we love you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, so let's start um, by looking at Jeremiah chapter 40. Um, if you have your Bibles, you can join me by reading along or uh, you can just listen. Either way is perfectly fine. So Jeremiah chapter 40 and um, you have to uh, excuse a little bit of my um, pronunciation of some words, but we will do our best. So chapter 40, we're going to look at verses 1 through 5. So let's read that now. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord after uh, Nezuzeradum, Don, <laughs> captain of the guards released him at Ramah. When he found him, he was bound in chains with all the exiles of Jerusalem and Judah who were being exiled to Babylon. The captain of the guards took Jeremiah and said to him, the Lord your God decreed this disaster on this place. Let me stop for a minute. Um, so last week, we talked about how God was going to bring restoration to Judah, restoration to God's people. God's people were in the midst of going into, walking into exile for 70 years. And so God gave Jeremiah a strengthening word for his people to take with them, to hold tight to as they were going to Babylon. And so um, this is what happened when Jeremiah was in jail. Uh, this captain of the guard, this Babylonian captain of the guard, um, Nebuzaradan, <laughs> um, released Jeremiah. And so that's what one through five is about. I meant to tell you earlier, but Anyway, we're going to start at verse 2. The captain of the guards took Jeremiah and said to him, The Lord your God decreed this disaster on this place, and the Lord has fulfilled it. He has done just what he decreed, because you people have sinned against the Lord and have not obeyed him. This thing has happened. Now pay attention. This is the guard, um, the Babylonian guard that took that um 
set Jeremiah free. This is him speaking to Jeremiah, telling Jeremiah to pay attention. He says, now pay attention. Today I am setting you free from the chains that were on your hands. If it pleases you to come with me to Babylon, come and I will take care of you. Remember God told Jeremiah that if you say what I tell you to say at the very beginning when he first called Jeremiah, he said, do not cower in front of the people. Do not be afraid of them. God says, and I will take care of you. And so um, that's what this captain of the guard is reassuring Jeremiah. He's saying, come with me to Babylon, come, and I will take care of you. Going on, he says, but if it seems wrong to you to come with me to Babylon, go no further. Look, the whole land is in front of you. Wherever it seems good and right for you to go, go there. When Jeremiah had not yet turned to go, Nebuzaradan said to him, Return to Gedaliah, son of Ahikim, son of Shepan, whom the king of Babylon has appointed over the cities of Judah and stay with him among the people or go wherever it seems right for you to go. So the captain of the guards gave him, Jeremiah, a ration and a gift and released him. One through four. Yes, five, sorry, excuse me. And so Jeremiah after being set free by this Babylonian captain of the guard, um, he said, you know, hey, come with me to Babylon and I promise I will take care of you because that is what Nebuchadnezzar told him to do. He said, take care of this man. Um, everything this man has said has come true. So, um, you know, Babylon, uh, Babylon, they did not want to anger any God. So if a God proclaims something and everything that was proclaimed came true, they're going to be fearful of that God and they're going to take care of the God's spokesperson. So here they have um, set Nehemiah free, uh, oh my goodness, Jeremiah free. And they're telling Jeremiah, you, you can either come to Babylon with me, I'll take care of you. Or if you don't feel like that's the right thing you need to do, then stay here in Judah with this other leader that Nebuchadnezzar has appointed to take care of the exiles that are left in Judah. And so Jeremiah decides to stay in Judah under the leadership of this man. And so, um, you know, in chapter 41, um, we learn about this man, this, this Babylonian leader that Nebuchadnezzar puts over um, the exiles in Judah. And so um, we learn about him in chapter 41, and we learn about another man coming named Ishmael. Um, he came and he basically tricked and he attacked and killed this leader, this Babylonian leader that was over um, Jeremiah and over all of the exiles that were told, you know, go stay with this guy. That guy got killed, tricked, attacked, and killed by this other man named Ishmael. Um, so now that this leader was killed that was over them, and this man Ishmael uh, did not deal very well with things. And so in chapter 42, the exiles actually come to Jeremiah and they are asking him for his advice. They're telling him, please, um, you know, pray for us. Ask the Lord what we are supposed to do. 
um, whatever you say, we will do because we want to do what the Lord says to do. Um, so Jeremiah tell, told them after praying, he says, okay, I'll go pray about it and I will come back and I will tell you what God said. And so Jeremiah comes back. Um, he sends in all the leadership. He sends in all the exiles and he says, hey, this is what God said to me regarding your request. And he's basically saying to them in chapter 42 that if they stayed in Judah, God would give them favor and, and um, they would basically be taken care of. But God said if they chose to go to Egypt, to flee to Egypt, um, they would basically die there either by sword, famine, or plague. That the very thing that they were afraid of in Judah would follow them to Egypt. And, um, and God says that uh, it would follow them so viciously that there would be no survivors. Uh, so Jeremiah says, to these exiles that it's better to stay in Judah. And so that was chapter 42. So chapter 43, they rejected Jeremiah's word from the Lord. The exile leaders did not believe Jeremiah heard from the Lord. They thought, they told him, you are lying to us. Um, we are not going to listen to you. We're going to Egypt. And so that's what they did. They packed their stuff up and they went to Egypt uh, in complete disobedience to the Lord. And you know, chapter 43, verse 6, tells us that... Um, it, these exile leaders, um, they were very prideful. They were very um, boastful. Um, they were very arrogant. Uh, they thought that um, everybody should come with them. They didn't think people should have a choice. So what they did was they basically forced all of the exiles to go with them to Egypt, regardless of what they thought. And chapter 43, verse 6 even says, tells us that these exile leaders forced Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, to go with them to Egypt. And so chapter 44, Jeremiah begins, in Egypt, to give a prophetic word for these exiles that are now in Egypt, that God will bring great hardships. Um, there will be death. There will be sword, famine, plague. Um, the same thing will be upon them as what was in Judah. And, you know, my thoughts is that why did they have to disobey? They didn't have to. They could have just followed the Lord and everything would be fine. Um, you know, it's sad. They, they disobeyed because of sin. Because of sin. Because of rebellion. And that's just because of sin. Um... And so, this is the conclusion of the story of Jeremiah. Now, the book itself of Jeremiah goes on through the rest of the chapters talking about uh, different prophecies that Jeremiah spoke on different nations over the world. Um, and so, I encourage you to read it because it's very good. But as of you and I and the group um, on Wednesday morning, 
this concludes what we're going to read about. Now, now, Jeremiah stayed in Egypt. This is where Jeremiah lived out the rest of his days. Um, let me just read to you Char Reverend Charles Spurgeon's quote um, I have written down here. It's a beautiful quote, and it makes a lot of sense. It says, God hates all evil, all injustice, all wrongdoing, all immorality, all sin of every kind. He hates it. He is not indifferent to it or tolerant of it, but his whole being goes out in righteous indignation against it. And he hates it first because he is infinitely pure. He hates it too because it is such an injury to us his creatures. He hates it because it so grievously mars what he made. Men and women, as God sees them, are rendered ugly through sin. God hates it too because it drives him to do what he dislikes doing. His unexpected work of judgment. Think about that, you know, as, as we conclude the book of Jeremiah, you know, what a refreshing, strengthening, um, encouraging word this book, this study has been for me personally, um, you know, going through what you and I, all of us are going through this pandemic, um, the world in mass chaos, um, everywhere in the world is being affected by COVID. Um, there, our nation, our country is in complete, um, chaos. There's, um, there's separation, there's, um, you know, just violence and turmoil um, between, it seems like, every factor uh, right now. And so I believe that even though this may not be the exact same as Judah very similar, hear me, very, very similar times to Jeremiah and Judah, very similar, but not exactly the same. I believe that this was a word, this was a timely word for you and for me. Um, you know, this strengthened me. It made me realize that Jeremiah knows how I'm feeling. With so much hurt and so much pain and being able to watch, you know, um, upsetting things like racial discord and seeing things so divided in our country and, um, I think it just makes you feel better to know that you're not alone and you're not by yourself. Jeremiah sat there and he watched things burn down that should have never been burned down. You know, when the Capitol was attacked um, on January 6th, you know what? Things happened that should have never happened. And we were able to watch that destruction, um, you know, no matter what side you're on, it should have never happened. Um, and so I'm still praying for that. But, you know, Jeremiah shows us that we are not alone, that there are people, even 
biblical characters that God has breathed upon this word of Jeremiah. And God is telling us that we are not alone in feeling broken and in feeling grieved and in feeling mourning and in feeling angry and in feeling frustrated and confused and just, I don't know what's going on with the world. That's exactly how Jeremiah felt. And he had such a hard mes message that he had to bring to the king. Um, so, so I think this book of Jeremiah, I really believe it was a good book for us to study. Um, and it also showed me that in the midst of judgment, okay, God brought judgment on Judah. In the midst of judgment, God is still good. He is still sovereign. That even in the fire, even in the most broken part of your being, you can know that God will take care of you. And you can know that God can be trusted. And he has you and me in his hands. And he, he has a plan for our lives, not just for our lives. He has a plan for America. He has a plan for the world. And so in studying Jeremiah, I pray that you were blessed as much as I was. That you found joy um, in this hard time. Um, so I just want to tell you, you know, that with whatever God chooses to do in our lives, whatever God chooses to do today, tomorrow, the next day with America, whatever God wants to do, we must trust him. And we need to be secure in trusting him. Trusting him with our lives. That when we stand for what his word stands for. Even though man, this world may threaten. We can still trust him. We can lift our hands and we can say, we trust you, Jesus. That we can surrender everything to him. Amen. So God is good in the hurt, in the crying. Lord knows I've cried. In the pain, in the frustration, in the anger. I've felt it. I felt it. I know what that feels like. But God is good. God is good. And he is worthy of all our praise. God is good in the bad. And God is good in the good. So I pray you learn something. I pray you were strengthened. I pray you were renewed and refreshed like I was. Um, you know, and this is why we have the Bible. So that we can relate. We can feel the things that these biblical characters felt. And we can know that we're not alone. And most of all, we're not alone because... God promises to never leave us or forsake us. So now, um, I want to talk to you guys about uh, something pertaining to the Wednesday morning service. Um, so after a lot of prayer, um, 
I express to Pastor Jim my feelings and my thoughts of needing to take a break. This is temporary. Listen, this is temporary. Um, just to regroup um, and see where we're at and knowing where we're at, seeing and discussing how we can uh, move forward uh, with the Wednesday um, morning service. Because see, at the very beginning of the pandemic last March, I began these videos and um, that was good. That was great for that time. You know, uh, no one had any idea how long this would last. <laughs> I would have never guessed this would have lasted this long. But, you know, first I started doing videos and um, it was good. It was perfect. It was just what we needed. But over time, I think what has happened is um, we need something more if that makes sense. Um, you know, I'm needing interaction. I know you are needing interaction. Um, and we need to get back to that setting of a real service again. Um, and I know many of you are very concerned. I'm the same way. Um, Hannah's doctor came back and said, you know, Hannah's white blood count and um, her immunity is very low right now because of the suppressing medicine she's on. So he just advised me and Aaron to be very careful uh, with Hannah. And so uh, we are... Um, and I, so I understand a lot of you are very concerned about actually coming to church and doing the service. So what I was trying to think of and what I was going to ask you all about, because I want to hear your heart. I want you to hear my heart. Um, you know, my heart right now wants to bring back a type. It may not be in the church having a normal service like before the pandemic, but it will be similar. Um, you know, my heart wants to still have that type of service where we have interaction, where we have discussion, where we can not, uh, not just watch a video and comment below, but I want to see your faces. I want to hear your voices. That makes me feel good. Um, you know, I want to hear how you're feeling about the message that day, um, the message that week, whatever God may be speaking to your hearts. I want to hear it. Um, and so along with videos, I wanted uh, to think of something that would bring also interaction and discussion. It'll be a lot like the way it used to be. So, and I know that, um, you know, a lot of you need that too. So what are you thinking about this? Um, you know, for us to find a way to do a video um, along with having ongoing open interaction, not just with me, but with each other, um, you know, the whole group, like in a Sunday school class, you know, uh, the whole group can interact um, and we can discuss together what we're talking about and what we're, we're teaching on because we teach together. It's not just me. We teach together. Um, and so I want you to show me, you know, let me know how you feel. Um, every thought, every feeling is welcome. Don't think that 
your feelings or your thoughts do not matter because they are very important to me and Pastor Jim. So let me know um, what would be a good way where we could have videos, um, but have the videos with open discussion with one another. Um, my thoughts were, there is a type of phone call called a Zoom. It's called a Zoom meeting. Zoom. Um, and it's basically like a phone call, but it's a face-to-face -face call. Um, so it's like you're on the phone with someone, but you can actually see them and talk to them like you are watching me on a camera. Um, and we can hear each other and we can talk back and back and forth. Um, and, you know, uh, <laughs> I tell my kids all the time, welcome to the days of the Jetsons. Remember the uh, Jetsons um, cartoon? I watched that a lot growing up. And I would always think it was very cool how they would go beep on the TV and, you know, some person would pop up and they would go, hey, Mrs. Jetson, how you doing? Or, hey, George, what's up? You know, what are we doing today? And George Jetson would always sit there and he would talk back to the person. I used to always think, wow, that's really cool. Well, they have that. And my kids do that for school. And um, it's very, very, a very neat thing to do to keep the kids um, interacting, not just with the teacher, but interacting with their friends also. And to also hear discussions. Like today, Hannah had a discussion with her teacher and her other, and she was able to hear everyone's um, feelings on it. You know, New Newport News Schools is thinking about going back to in-classroom teaching. Um, and it would be a hybrid thing. So it would be, for example, my kids are still doing virtual because of uh, Hannah. But uh, the schools are giving out options to for the kids to go three days in classroom. And then the last two days of the week, they would have virtual Um so it's not completely in classroom, but they're just trying to uh, bring out a plan that brings out options for parents who want their children to come back to in classroom. So Hannah and Grace in their class with their teacher, their teacher brought it up and said, hey, I want to I discuss this with the class. And so Hannah and Gracie got to, on this Zoom call, they got to listen to everyone's voice and listen to everyone's uh, feelings and they got to discuss and interact with their friends and and their um, their classmates and interact with their teacher and and they got to see how other people are feeling um, and so this helps uh, with um, you know feeling like they're not isolated so much because I know with COVID and just staying at home, I've felt isolated. Um, and so I don't want any of us to feel that way. So maybe a Zoom would be a great idea. Think about it and let me know if you are not, um, if you are not understanding how to connect to Zoom or if you need help um, connecting to Zoom, um, if this sounds like a good idea to you, Aaron and I um, can help you. Um, if this is what we decide as a group to do, um, we will probably, let's give it a date. Let's say we will make our final decision on what to do next on these videos, March 1st. Um, just to give a date, that can always change. But um, 
let's just say March 1st and let's give time. Um, but anyway, if Zoom seems to be a great idea for everyone, then what we'll do is, and Aaron will help me out. You know, Aaron is very good. He is a blessing with these videos. Um, he, <laughs> it's what he does for a living. He edits them and he, he puts stuff in there and he makes it look very nice. So, um, Aaron is going to help me do a video where it explains about Zoom and it explains about how to get on Zoom and it explains about how to work Zoom and how to get on the meeting. They call it a meeting, but we could call it a service. Um, if that is what we decide that is good for everyone in this group. So please let me know your thoughts. And of course, you know, um, as with everything, 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 pray first. This is, let's spend the next week praying, seeking the Lord, asking the Lord, is this the direction that we want the Wednesday morning service to go? Because we want to always hear him first. We want to hear the Lord first above all things. We want to hear him. So if that sounds good to you, pray about it. Ask the Lord. And then, you know, after praying the next week, I want you to let me know how you're feeling. Let me know what this, um, what this means to you. Um, what, give me suggestions. If Zoom is not going to work, that's fine. We need to, um, we decide as a group. So let's just be in prayer and let's seek the Lord, what he wants us to do uh, virtually right now in this season. Um, and give me feedback. I want to hear you. I want to hear your feelings, your thoughts. All of that is very, very important to me. So let me know what you think um, on ways to get more interaction, ways to get more discussion, and um, and we will bring it all to the table, and we will sit down and we will discuss with each other um, what that would look like. We could even do a um, a silly little Zoom meeting just to get a feel for it. And we can see how that goes. If that is something you all want to do, let me know. Um, and it doesn't even have to be a service time. It can be, we can do a goofy little run through or goofy little, um, goofy little video where we just get everybody a time and a day to come on the Zoom and just say, hello, how's everybody doing today? Um, and then that can be our trial um, to see how it feels, to see if that is what we would want to do for the Wednesday morning services. So let me know. Um, I know I keep talking and talking and talking away, but please message me, call me, whatever it is. Get in contact with me and let me know how you feel about this. And I will be getting with Pastor Jim and uh, we will be just praying about it and we will be discussing things uh, while on this break. So um, this break is not forever. This is temporary just to um, uh, readjust things. You know, you always have to reevaluate things every so often, um, especially in this crazy time uh, we're in right now. So let's just do that. That's the plan for now. And um, you guys give me your feedback. So let's close in prayer. Father God, I just praise your name right now, Lord. I, I praise you for your holiness, for your sovereignty. I praise you, God, because you are faithful. 
Lord, that you are good. And Lord, we worship you because you are worthy of all our praise. Lord, there is nothing too difficult for you. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. For your word, Father, to trust you no matter what. Lord, you are just and you are a righteous God. Lord, that no matter what happens to us today, tomorrow, the next day, Lord, we are in your hands and we can trust you. Thank you, God, that your word says, I will trust the Lord with all my heart and lean not on my own understanding, but I will acknowledge him in all my ways and he will direct my paths. Father, I thank you for your word today. I thank you, God, for your example in Jeremiah, Lord, letting us know that we are not alone, that we are feeling your heart Lord, that when we grieve, you grieve, you grieve, Lord, you mourn for this country. Lord, you don't want to bring judgment. Lord, but when sin is so bad, that's what every good parent does for their loving child. So, Lord, I pray, God, for each and every one of us to trust you more this day God help us to step out in faith and trust you more right where we're at Lord right where we're at just trust you with our lives trust you God with our families trust you Jesus in every area of our life God we give it to you in the name of Jesus Father, I pray your blessings over every person. In the name of Jesus, God, I pray that you would direct us to where this Wednesday morning service is supposed to go next, God. May you direct us. May you lead us, Father God, by the power of your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, Father, we wait on you. We trust you. And we love you, Father. In the name of Jesus and all God's people said, amen and amen. Okay, so I pray you have a good week and I pray blessings over you in the name of Jesus. And I will be in contact with you. Don't give up. Be thinking about what I said and we will get back together soon. And uh, contact me with your feedback and just let me know. I love you and you be blessed.